Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our virtual council meeting of April 27th, 2021. Uh, we welcome also our listeners and uh, hopefully some participants later in our meeting related to a uh, conversation related to the RV bylaw. Um, we've invited and encouraged people to pre-submit their thoughts related to the matter. But at the same time, we believe our technical uh, systems are going to allow some participation, just as if our council chambers were in its normal format using this virtual COVID friendly uh, method that we've adopted of conducting council meetings for the past while. So um, without any further uh, address, I guess I would, uh, entertain a motion to open the meeting, a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Foisy, seconded by Councillor Lagasse. That this, <clears throat> that this meeting be opened at 7.01 p.m. All in favor? Carried. As uh, is usual of late, we need to appoint a recording clerk for this meeting. So I would take a mover and a seconder for that purpose. Moved by Councillor Baudoua, seconded by Councillor Viancor. That Andre Gagne be appointed as the recording clerk for the purpose of this meeting. All in favor. Carried. Our last meeting was April 13th, 2021, and our minutes have been circulated for that meeting. I take a mover and a seconder for those minutes. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Baudoua. that the minutes of the regular meeting held April 13th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any questions or issues with the minutes? All in favor? Carried. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Okay, typically at this point, I would, um, having seen the agenda package, indicate that I have a uh, pecuniary interest with some of the notices of motion that are coming under Article 7 of our agenda, but um, there's uh, none of those notices of motion going to be considered this evening, um, and I can explain to Council why, if they so desire, but um, all of the notices of motions are struck from the agenda for this evening. Any other uh, disclosures of pecuniary interest? Okay. I, I yes. would like to know. I would like to know why the motions okay. are. <clears throat> um, item seven point one: the um, arrangement for support from community seniors housing. It speaks to a schedule A and a um, limited guarantee along with the uh, mortgage terms and none of which are supplied with the notice of motion. So um, I don't think it's at all appropriate to consider a notice of motion with three quarters of the information it refers to not available. So that would be the first one. The um, other three, which as I indicated, may or may not hold some uh, pecuniary interest to me if they were tabled, um, were already dealt with at the last council meeting. And under our procedural bylaw, you cannot revisit the same subject within the uh, calendar year. So because the matters were dealt with under recorded vote and the window for um, revisiting them closed, 
they will not be discussed for another 50 weeks at the earliest. Yes, Councillor Foisey. It's not the same motion. The same topic and the same uh, subject and the same, the procedural bylaw is very clear that the same question cannot be dealt with in the calendar year. Yes, sir. It's not the same question. I see. Okay, well, that's subject to interpretation of the presiding officer and that would be me. And that's the determination I've made based upon the agenda that was put before me. Any other questions? Okay, moving along. Presentations and delegations, and we welcome our uh, Director of Planning to listen in this evening uh, towards some of this. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, CAO Johnston, that the presentation regarding the seniors housing is not being tabled this evening? That's correct, Your Worship. The, Mr. Harriman um, sent me an email earlier or later this afternoon indicating that they, uh, they wish to amend their report with some additional information and that he would withdraw the uh, presentation this evening and um, uh, ask to it, that it to be rescheduled at a future meeting. Okay, thank you. Moving then to 4.2, the zoning bylaw regulation uh, regarding recreational vehicles. Uh, we have two individuals who have submitted their um, correspondence to us related to that. And I'm unsure at this point, looking at my screen, whether they are readily available to uh, converse with us or not. But before I go there, then Councillor Foisey, yes, you have a question? When was the last date that uh, we talked about the zoning bylaw? I'm know? unclear on that. Last date that we spoke about the zoning bylaw. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm unsure uh, when that was, but I'm quite certain it must be over a year ago. Yes, uh, CAO Johnston. Um, that that um, information and that report was in the package for council. The last meeting uh, that the um, zoning bylaw, it's not an RV bylaw, but the zoning bylaw was amended was July the 9th, 2019. Okay, thank you. So um, our first presenter, Marcy Dewey, is she available to? Uh... I will. Yes, sorry. I will admit everybody. So it will take a second to uh, get everybody going on there. Okay, thank you. I also have someone on the phone. I'm not sure if they want to speak or not. Um, but after uh, Marcy and uh, Michael Greer, then we can go to the phone lines. Okay, I see a signal from Councillor Legassi that she'd like to ask a question. Yes, I would. Um, I don't know if everyone recalls, we did have a public meeting and at a public meeting, there was um, a form that people sign and I have been getting, um, I have had conversation with several people regarding this form that they signed and they informed me that they were not aware of um, the item on our agenda tonight. Um, when they signed the form, uh, they were under the impression that they would get notification if the zoning bylaw for the recreational vehicles came up in public again and they were not notified. Okay. Thank you. Do we have uh, Marcy Dewey able to address us this evening? Marcy, if you could unmute yourself, please. Hello? Yes, thank you. We can hear you, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Council has asked for import regarding the RV regulation. We clearly have a problem. We are seeing RVs on vacant lots everywhere. We see them in our subdivisions, our waterfront, and in our core settlement of Bonfield. In some cases, RVs are never moved. Over time, some RVs have become run down. 
and are being patched with roofs and walls. Some properties have multiple RVs with multiple families occupying them from April to late October. Generators run constantly and they are essentially unregulated grounds. Meanwhile, actual campgrounds exist in our township. They are taxed commercially and they are subject to strict environmental rules. The use of an RV as a permanent dwelling is not permitted under the Planning Act or Ontario Building Code. Where is the sewage and gray water being disposed of on these unregulated properties? An RV holding tank can fill in a matter of days. We have seen a number of blue-green algae blooms in Lake Nosbissing. A study for East Barris has pointed to Bonfield Basin as one of the areas of Lake Nosbissings where blue-green algae blooms are most pronounced. Our lakes and our natural environment are our greatest assets. We should not have to ask council to protect them. Bonfield zoning bylaw has been in place for almost 10 years. It does not allow RVs on vacant land anywhere in the township. This needs to be enforced. You already spent time and money into making sure this bylaw was enforceable. Don't go backwards. There is no overall benefit to our community allowing the use of RVs on vacant land. They do not encourage development. They can't be taxed as a dwelling, but they do, however, have access to the same services. Wouldn't it be better to encourage people who purchase property to build a home, cottage, or business? Whether or not you license the use of RVs, they should not be allowed on vacant land. An existing dwelling should be required. Proper setbacks, designated permitted areas, and limits to RVs on properties. Proper disposal of gray water and sewage. People who choose to invest in Bonfield by purchasing a home should be confident in knowing they won't be living beside an unregulated trailer park. They should also know the township enforces the bylaws they create. In a very short time, 50 signatures and counting have been collected. Homeowners want enforcement. Let's move towards progression in the community, not a campground. Protect our environment. Please do the right thing. Let enforcement take place. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Any questions? If anybody wants to know about the study, um, East Ferris hired its Hutchinson's. Uh, it's online, you can look at it. It's all there. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We also uh, received the um, print version of your um, concerns related to yep. that and uh, council had those in their package um, over the weekend to peruse. So uh, thank you for your contribution related to that uh, dialogue. Did you also get having. the petition? Did you also uh, get yes, the Yes, it was attached. Okay, great. Just to let you guys know that there are homeowners that have this major concern and would like to see enforcement. I think that's I think that's important for you guys to recognize that people in the community are upset and they would like to see enforcement take place with the existing bylaw and anything that goes forward. They want stricter policies around this because like in my personal experience, I can't speak for everybody on the petition, but my personal experience is one trailer has become many and uh, many properties have come more. So, I mean, this is multiplying over the community and it really is not fair to the taxpayer of the homeowner. So thank you. All right, thank you. Our next, um, was there any questions anybody had of uh, presenter Marcy? Ms. Dewey, I should say. All right, thank you. Our next presenter is Michael Greer. I see you there on the screen. You're uh, welcome to address council. Okay, uh, I'm unmuted, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone as well for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I've spoken to several of you individually and I appreciate those conversations we've had as well. Um, and it's nice to be able to have a bit of a forum now to speak to you all together. Uh, I was gonna write out something as well. You've all had a package, like you said, that's in uh, 
it's in with your packages as well that I had done uh, in writing. Uh, my concern, I'm just going to kind of piggyback on what Marcy just said. Uh, I don't know Marcy. We've like, we're not teaming up here. Uh, this is you're, you're hearing from separate homeowners with separate issues, but we have the same issue basically. And uh, our issue is that the, the RV bylaw needs to be enforced and it needs to, we need to know what's going on. Uh, community, the community right now, I, you guys must understand that there's a bit of shake with the public trust with council right now. The media is not portraying you guys in a positive light. Uh, anything that comes out of Bonfield in the news right now has not been positive. I tried to speak to people about this issue. And honestly, there was so much negativity. It was hard to have discussions that were to get anywhere, but it wasn't good. None of it was good, unfortunately. So I'm trying to have something good come of this. People do want this. This is a big issue. I would argue that uh, there is nothing more important to people than their homes. Homes are your, gonna be your biggest investment in your life. And anything that threatens the enjoyment of your home, whether it be a trailer, whatever's going on. There's, a, there's some foolishness going on here and we need to put an end to it. I've not been here that long. My parents are from Bonfield. They've been here since 1999. So I'm not, this isn't all new for me, unfortunately, but we, uh, I've spoken to enough people and I, I represent all the homeowners, every single one in solidarity on the street that I live on, that uh, they've asked me to speak on their behalf to say that this is a real issue. It's going to be an issue that people vote on. So I hope you guys are, are on the wrong right side of this. Uh, people are watching now. Social media doesn't allow for the, the, the stuff to not be noticed anymore. So I'm letting you guys know I've wrote to all of you and I've been very clear. I've spoken to Andrew. He understands. I've spoken to the Ministry of the Environment. I've spoken to Conservation Authority. Everybody knows what's going on with this situation right now. Like it's not, it couldn't be more clear that it is a problem and it's not just a unique problem to Bonfield. We understand that. But uh, where I live specifically, and I keep trying to be very specific, I can't speak to other areas in, in the community. I'm speaking to where I live in the Greenwood subdivision, which is a unique area to Bonfield, I would argue. We are a semi-urban sort of area. We are very close. Lots here are very small in size. They're half an acre, if that, in some cases. We're not talking 10 acres, five acres, 100 acres out in the middle of nowhere. We are talking about homes all closely together, very similar to something that would say be even in the city. Not much different. Now, in these situations, we're seeing trailers starting. There's, there's the odd little vacant lot between us that is, again, a half an acre in size. And we are seeing improper storage of items, sea cans, sea containers, trailers. It's, I, I see it all as one issue. I realize that the vacant lot bylaw and the RV bylaw are two separate issues. I see them together as one problem because it's nothing is being enforced and you can only you blame COVID so much. This has been going on pre COVID long time. We all know this. So I, I plead to you. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate my whole package to you again. It's long. And I realize I wrote to you many times in this matter, but uh, I plead to you, you, you guys have to do something here. Uh, pitting pitting homeowners against property owners uh, why why are we doing that that's not right this is a community that should care about each other we welcome investment into bonfield we welcome people to buy properties and build it 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 it, it devalues us as a community to allow lawlessness and no bylaw enforcement and just people going willy-nilly doing whatever they want to because they think well i own the land so it doesn't matter it does matter. We're not an unorganized township. We pay good taxes for our bylaws to be enforced. We are an organized township. And people are coming here with the impression that they look around, they see these things happening. They think, well, I can do that too. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, please, please, enough. I mean, it's got to stop. You guys are more than capable of coming up to a solution. I know you've paid for consultants in the past. I'd actually like to know like money's been spent on this issue, I'm sure many times. Ian Kilgore comes to mind, the name that I'm sure you all would remember as a consultant was paid to look into this. Money has been spent, time has been spent, and, and we're going backwards. Somebody has ordered to have the complete RV bylaw suspended. That, no one knows, I've spoken to several council members, there's no communication, people didn't know that was suspended that the bylaw is literally not being enforced at all in, in, in any way right now. Now, 
that's not COVID related. It was just basically suspended, I think, because there's just so much confusion. But the problem is, is now in a vacuum, we have a lot of problems starting to pop up. It's exponential. And one trailer, like Marcy said, becomes 10, et cetera. And because of COVID, the Southern folks are buying up our local property. It, so somebody that thinks that today this isn't their problem, they need to wake up and realize, oh, maybe there is a vacant lot near me. And this could be a problem in, in a very short time. So I appreciate you listening to me. I'm not going to get into all the details because I really honestly think that each one of you knows the details. And uh, I just hope that, that you, you make the right decision here. Whatever needs to be done. I'm not really sure what's holding this up. Uh, I honestly don't think you can tweak this bylaw. You've already paid for a professional, to, a municipal professional to look at this. He's given you his advice. He tweaked it. And then you just went and you, you suspended it anyways which is again, backwards. I don't understand that. And I don't think anybody does. So like we matter here guys. And uh, we're not saying that people that own properties don't matter, they do matter. But these bylaws are in place for a reason. Smart people wrote these bylaws in the first place. They exist for a reason. And uh, to disregard them and just think no one's gonna notice and that maybe 20 years ago that could happen. But this is new times, these are new days. The, 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 the real estate market is completely different than what it was 20 years ago. So I, again, I just, I plead to you all to do the right thing. Uh, you've got our packages. I would welcome individually, if anybody has any questions, I can give you the contacts of the people I've spoken with at the Conservation Authority, at the Ministry of the Environment. They don't want to get involved in this. They want Bonfield to police itself. They don't want, they don't step in on stuff like this. We are more than capable. We have our own bylaws and our own bylaw enforcement. So they don't understand what the problem is. And quite frankly, most of us don't. Uh, but there won't be licenses issued for septic tanks for RVs. It's not considered a legal dwelling. And th th there's provincial bylaws, there's building codes, there's all kinds of reasons why a trailer is not considered a proper trail, an RV trailer is not considered a proper dwelling. Um, so, and I, I think I, you guys have had presentations in the past. I know you have where that has been explained to you. Agencies that I've spoken to have said they've had little consultations one on one with folks at the, at the township explaining this as well. So uh, I understand that there's people that have bigger properties out in the outskirts. I realize it's a big issue. It's complicating, which is why I kind of have to go back to then. I just think to be fair to everyone, you enforce the bylaw as it's written, because at the end of the day, you can pick apart things that's going to affect somebody differently. and It's going to be unfair to somebody else. So it's only fair if you just say, look, this is the bylaw. This is how it was written. And it, it, unfortunately, because we have so many homeowners that are starting to become impacted negatively by this and they're starting to complain and we can get you many more signatures if that's what you want. If you don't believe us that there's not enough people involved here that that's starting to, to say something. We, it's because of COVID that we could not properly canvas. This is just word of mouth and people that wanted to sign this and submit. So uh, again, you guys are elected officials. We are, this is, we are your electorate and we are, we are asking you here to fix this situation. It's been many, many years in the making. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, just uh, for my information, did we lose two members of council in the conversation here? It, it appears to me that there's only three of us left on the screen. And that's unfortunate. Councillor Foisey and Councillor Baudouin weren't able to hear your address. Uh, they've left the meeting. So um, notwithstanding that, um, we have heard you and I, I am one of the individuals that spoke with you, uh, you know, one on one kind of thing over the phone and uh, appreciated your your input related to more specifically uh, the area right around you and some of the challenges that you've you've reminded me of in your document that you submitted. And, uh, and we both agree that that type of behavior is totally unacceptable and, uh, and ca cannot be happening in, uh, in our community, but it, more importantly in a subdivision. So uh, I hear you on that. That's yes, if, go ahead. I, and, and you know, and I appreciate that, I do. And I appreciate anyone that took the time to speak to me about this, uh, including yourself, sir. And just to really punch home this point, as I speak to you both, right, all of you, sorry, right now, as I look out my picture window of my living room, I am staring at a tarp wrapped around three trees 
that the homeowners from out of town use when they visit here to camp, that's their, their potty. I'm looking at it right now. I'd love to turn the, the, the video so you could see it because I think it would really strike home to you just the, like I said, the, the wild west kind of mentality that we're starting to experience. Like my wife and me, what do we do? Are we gonna move? Like, like these are, why would we even consider that? We're young professional adults with kids. And I would argue we are the lifeblood of this community. We represent the new blood. We're trying to breathe in this new blood to the community. And I would like to think we represent that. And uh, like I said, I'm looking right now as we talk to just like a tarp wrapped around trees that a bucket usually goes in and that's where they go to the bathroom when they tent camp, soon to be trailers brought in. Um, so that's, that's why I feel like a sense of urgency and I apologize if I, <laughs> I'm not prepared enough because I really wanted to just plead to you all uh, this way instead of maybe going on like I have in my emails to you. But anyways, I just wanted to let you know that it's, it's quite crazy. Uh, this is the kind of thing that's kind of going, been going on. And, it, and I understand if not all of you see this, because again, Bonfield, Bonfield is married in many different areas. I get that, uh, you know, but unfortunately it is an issue. Sorry, thank you. And now, does council have any questions before I uh, make any further comment to Mr. Greer? Okay. Um, and as I said to you on the phone, and that, that's probably, some months ago now, it is more complex in that, in that we have, um, you know, some some acreages where there could be a, a trailer park there. And as I, I it's so multifaceted, the bylaw, but it, it, as I described it to you at the time, it's a Mississauga type bylaw in that it says you can't have your travel trailer parked for the, you know, the winter storage in the side yard or the front yard and things like that that if you only had a little driveway in front of your uh, row housing in Mississauga and you drove down the subdivision, yes, that's the last thing you want to see is everybody with their boat and their travel trailer on the front lawn. In our particular case, in, in many cases, uh, the side yard or the uh, backyard, even though it's visible, um, is not offensive to most people depending on the situation on a case-by-case -case basis. And it's very difficult to write a bylaw, uh, you know, using judgment as the, as the parameters. So um, I think what we've been struggling to find, um, and not prejudging what uh, maybe staff will, will indicate as far as enforcement um, protocols or whatever, but what we've been trying to find is that balance where um, if a person does own a piece of vacant property and they pull in with their travel trailer and they set it up for, you know, June, July and August, and they have every intention of taking it home with them uh, when they leave, is that acceptable, even though there's no other buildings on the, the building lot? Is it legal to park your travel trailer uh, on your property you know, the 11 months a year pre-COVID that you weren't using it, things like that. So it's all of those things that we've tried to find moderation in the language of how we, do, how we um, you know, enforce it going forward. And, and in a, I guess in summary to that, the, the compromise that we all came to was that it was going to be a complaint-based um, response from the municipality in that we weren't going to go out with a drone and hunt down everybody's RV that they had and, um, you know, send enforcement around to speak to them. If it was generally acceptable and there, there was no complaints lodged related to it, um, we weren't going to go looking for problems that didn't exist. But having said that, and we are aware that there is a number of situations that were brought to our table as unacceptable. And on that, uh, Avenue, yes, by all means, enforcement is necessary. I have a memo in the same package from uh, from our enforcement individual, and he indicated that as as late as uh, the past week that he's been uh, reviewing this file. And, and in most cases, and I say most cases, there's always those difficult ones that, uh, as you described to me, <laughs> your neighbor with the tarp uh, doesn't doesn't take the hint very well. And um, in most cases, people 
make every effort to comply with um, the bylaw once they're made aware of it and uh, try to be good neighbors. There are those exceptions that, that um, try to make life difficult for everyone around them. And uh, that's where our enforcement team needs to uh, focus their attention and use the, the mechanisms that they have to uh, force compliance if it's not voluntary. So uh, it's a long road that we've been on on this, trying to find that uh, place of, of um you know, acceptance to all parties. And I, I know in municipal government that that's never to be found. But um, having said that, we by having this discussion tonight, we are certainly working towards trying to, um, you know, improve our, our delivery on uh, this bylaw in particular to, to all the parties that have concerns with it. Is there anybody that wants to um, make any comment or add anything to the dialogue at this point in time? Is there any other, um, yes, uh, Councillor Viancourt. I just want to say, um, I know there's a lot of different things going on with this bylaw and uh, a lot of different, I think of, uh, um, you can't paint everybody with the same brush, I would say, with different properties. So I, I'm, I'm sure we can come up with a, there's got to be some way of getting together and, and coming up with a, with a proper, I think, bylaw that's going to satisfy most of the people and to the ones that are out in, in that are not in town compared to the ones that are uh, with different half acre lots. And I was speaking to Andrew also, and there's different towns that have different bylaws that can work. So I, I think we can come to an agreement, hopefully, and uh, everybody can be happy. And, and I'm sure we can. That's all I gotta say, thanks. Yes, Councillor Lagasse. I agree with um, with uh, Councillor Van Cole and 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 you also, Mayor McLaren. And um, this bylaw was was based on a city bylaw, and um, our bylaw should uh, should represent our the um, the rural the rural municipality that we live in. And I'm glad it's come to the table back again. And I know it needs needs work. And this was the whole reason why I did vote against it. Not that I disagree with uh, some of it, but I do agree that it wasn't right for our municipality. So I'm glad it's come back and I'm looking forward to the changes that, it, that uh, we'll be doing. Could I say something? Could I say something again? Could I ask a question? It's Marcy again. Um, I was muted there. I apologize. Thank you, Councillor Lagasse, for your comments. Um, I hear Marcy uh, seeking to um, speak to us again. Uh, if that's acceptable to Council, I'll allow that. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, I just, um, like, we already have a bylaw on the record um, that speaks to this. And we also, like you guys talk about this bylaw as if, as if these bylaws aren't bylaws for Northern Ontario. So like, I wanna correct some things about what you guys are trying to feed me, which is that the bylaws aren't that different from the ones around us. And you guys have already paid a consultant to visit this and here we are again and it's very frustrating as a homeowner to be in this process for as long as I have been with you people and not have like like I'm just not sure exactly how we're so far from where we were and like I said if you look around at our northern um, townships that are neighbors to us 
the bylaw isn't any different. So when you speak of it being, yeah, we're not talking about somebody who owns a home, who's parking their RV or even letting somebody stay there. So I don't know what the reality is for other people, but in my experience, it's multiple trailers that never leave, that have roofs, decks, uh, siding, and they're there for months and they never leave. And so for the facade of this parking in a small area, like it's just not the picture that I'm looking at. So I appreciate your time again. And uh, I just wanna be clear about exactly what we're talking about because I'm not talking about a dwelling with a parked RV in it. <laughs> So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I just noted your comment there um, when he referenced you people. Um, not that I'm pointing you out to be a Don Cherry, but uh, <laughs> this council table, um, uh, we all have varying interests as far as uh, the RV bylaw. I have some vacant lots of my own. Apologies for you people. Parcels, and uh, I don't hold any RVs uh, because recreation very rarely finds me but uh, nonetheless uh, we'll keep it uh, on the upper in that uh, all parties are working towards resolving this issue to everybody's satisfaction so I, I'm, I'm certain you meant no offense by that no I didn't yes uh, but I am Greer. frustrated okay thank you yes uh, um, Mr. Greer one last comment yeah I just again I I I, I will also would like to iterate, reiterate that uh, I'm only speaking about vacant lots. Uh, and I, I tried to make sure that was really clear as well um, in my package to you guys, my email to you guys. Uh, my concern is very specific to vacant lots as well. Uh, I have all the respect in the world for a homeowner doing whatever they wish on their properties. Um, but in this case, again, because these are lots that are not being developed, there's been, and like I've said, again, there's no permits. There's there, like, we're, we're being all, we're trying to all be fair. We realize, I hear what you're saying. We realize that uh, we're a community. We got to kind of work all together. Um, and that's why, like, I've been here since 2015. I've been speaking to our bylaw officer shortly after that for all this time. And I, I think Marcy's even been before that. Uh, so it's not like we're not, we're, we're trying not to show like we're impatient, but <laughs> we get that the wheels turn slow. I understand that, uh, but it's just that we do feel like maybe there's a bit more of an urgency. COVID has really changed things. And I'm sure you all realize that you must see like, like the, the real estate wise, it's completely different now. Uh, and that's why I feel like there's maybe more of an urgency maybe now than ever. Folks are gonna look for loopholes in small communities like ours to, to, to unfortunately to, to no good ends to take advantage. And, and, and that's why like, uh, I would just like to, I don't mean to be rude, but to take a bit of a harder edge, a harder posture on some of this. Again, appreciate that it has to be specific complaints only. Uh, a complaint by complaint is understandable. Uh, I've, I've always been very specific. Like I don't try to speak in generalities. I've been very specific in the past to my experiences. Um, so Again, I appreciate it. I just wanted to make that clear. We're only talking about, at least myself anyways, only speaking of vacant lots uh, that have not been developed over many, many years. And in, my, in the trailers that I've mentioned to you, none of these trailers left the property. So we're not even talking about folks that just come up on the weekend, enjoy the lake for a fish, you know, that would be obviously something, but this is properties that they don't leave. They move in, they set up, they enjoy it as a campground. And, and so that's where it becomes like an issue for the homeowners beside them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The other um, thing, uh, because this dialogue has been happening now for so long is that it's been in the media and other locations related to licensing of short-term RV uh, location on, on vacant lots. And just to move away from the uh, potential for an RV user to feel they've been, you know, reported on by their neighbor or, uh, you know, ratted out that I have an RV here and all of a sudden uh, township bylaw enforcement is, is snooping around. Um, somewhere along the way, it may be beneficial that we, uh, seek voluntary licensing of these things. If it is your intention to come in, put your RV on the lot for a period of time, whatever uh, determination we set on that, that you get a license. And um, at the same time, uh, the license will indicate to you what, what your rights and responsibilities are as far as your gray water and your, uh, you know, your conduct and everything else related to being allowed to do so. So th that's another option that's, uh, that's out there. 
So, all right. Thank you for your comments. Is there anybody else uh, in the phone lines, Andre, that uh, is seeking to I'm just, speak to I'm us? just going to open up and unmute and see if there's anybody there. Conference has been unmuted. Is there anybody on the phone line that would like to make comments to this subject? I'm not hearing anything from the phone lines. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anybody else appearing on our screen this evening that uh, wishes to address council related to RV bylaws subject matter? Yes, could I, could I talk, uh, Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, it's uh, John. I'd just, I'd just like to, to say a few words, like what she, what she was talking about a while ago was basically trying to say all the people that have trailers and at their property that they should basically sell it to so mm -hmm. this they get somebody to come in and build on it. We some of us we we do that because it's the only thing we can do to enjoy ourselves in the summer. We don't do anything wrong. We close our trailers at a certain date and we don't touch them. Like we it's it's maddening when we bought this property, we uh, we figured, well, you know, it's it's going to be our retirement place to go enjoy ourselves. And there's so much. I know that sometimes there's uh, stuff that goes on, but most of us are pretty good. We try to keep everything clean. We do whatever we have to and we we do nothing wrong. You know what I mean? We're still paying tax. Like at one time she brought up the tax thing. Well, I've been living here for 40 some years. I've been paying tax for my house. Plus I pay tax from that property. And don't, she has no right saying that we don't pay tax for in this, in this township. That's one thing that bothered me for a long time. And I don't, I don't know. I just, it has been sort of just Okay, I appreciate your comments. I'm going to ask everybody that's participating night tonight not to, um, you know, speak to the other individual uh, one direction no. or the other. But your your comments are valued in the fact that you add a perspective mm -hmm. of of someone who has an RV and uses it on a, a vacant lot. So, yes, thank you for that, John. Okay. Um, a moment ago, uh, yes, Andre. I will just check the phone lines again. Make sure. Uh, somebody came on. So anyone on the phone line wanting to make comments on this subject? No? Okay, I will okay. mute the phones. Uh, the Director of Planning also uh, caught my attention seeking Unmuted. input, and I believe the CAO is also looking to add comment. Uh, the CAO would like to go first, I believe. If you don't mind, uh, Mr. LaPlante, um, no, I, I wanted uh, your worship to uh, to let everybody um, have their say, um, but I, I needed to. Uh, I wanted to make some comments uh, of a positive nature, um, but I wanted to hear everyone's position first. I want to say first of all, um, at the outset, I'll make this brief, but uh, I want to say at the outset that uh, if there was any miscommunication on the part of people that signed a petition uh, almost two years ago, um, that's my responsibility. No one else's. Um, I, I uh, misunderstood that, and uh, my understanding was that we were going to let those people know specifically when the bylaw was going to be up for a review. This is a discussion, and I thought that, and again, if, if, if this wasn't the case, I apologize for it. I thought that the, uh, the notice we gave on our website uh, and Citizens Alert about we were going to have a discussion this evening in order for um, the full council, that's sadly not here, um, could uh, understand what the issues are. And uh, there's, there's two choices here. Um, despite what the vote was uh, in, uh, on July 9th, 2019, that bylaw was the, the, the amendments to the zoning bylaw regarding RV uh, and other issues, but regarding RV use uh, was passed, was passed. Um, the um, uh, the, the uh, statement that was made that um, certain members of council didn't know why no enforcement as a blatant out and out falsehood. I have a memo that I sent to um, my colleagues, Mr. LaPlante, uh, Mr. O'Reilly, and copied all of council, 
all of council. And the memo was dated July the, July the uh, uh, 11th. So this was two days after the council meeting. And in the memo, I said that I had been directed uh, to uh, uh, pass on the following direction to, to you, to uh, particularly, especially to uh, Mr. O'Reilly, that enforcement would be um, only on the basis of written complaints uh, and other issues in there. But uh, the, the notion that council was not aware, that any member of council was not aware that it was not being enforced, as I said, is, uh, is, is a falsehood. But um, uh, to, be, to be more specific, um, uh, it, it's rather um, uh, an unfair knock on my colleagues because we were doing what we were told to do. If you recall, um, and I want to give council um, full credit, I, I don't like the situation we're in. And I want to say to, um, to Michael and, um, and um, Marcy um, and, and John, um, I believe that um, the three of us, um, John and, and um, um, Michael and Marcy have had conversations. And, I, and, I, and you were always very reasonable when you talked to me on the phone. I, I realized very, very frustration. And, and uh, we were, as the mayor has said, we were trying to do uh, the best we could under the circumstances. I've been in the business and, and your presentation tonight, Michael, and what you said, John and, and Marcy, um, very much so I appreciate because um, as frustrated as you are, you made very positive statements and that's how we're gonna get um, to a, a, a better side on this issue. So I appreciate your, your remarks very much. Um, I've been in the business of municipal government on and off at the provincial and municipal level for almost 45 years. I, I'm not going to criticize council because I, the, what, what, what happened on July the 9th was um, the best of intentions. After that bylaw was passed, there was a lot of discussion um, uh, in the room and in the parking lot. We decided, uh, given the time of year that we were at in, in, uh, in July, that uh, we would, we would oh, internet connection is unstable, that we would... Um, um, do enforcement on written complaint only. And the idea was that we would go through this particular season from July till the end of, of the, um, uh, the RV season and, and see how things um, looked on the ground. And then um, in my, and, and I, I told a number of people, some of whom may be here on the screen, that it was my intention to bring this matter back to council uh, before the, the next season in 2020. And I had in my diary, uh, a notation to bring this matter up at a meeting in March, uh, the second meeting of council in March of 2020. And we all know what happened there. And, and so that meeting didn't take place. And that's not anybody's fault here. I'm just saying that that was the intention. And unfortunately, it didn't, um, uh, it didn't, um, uh, didn't happen the way we, we'd all hoped it would. I totally agree with you, Michael, that <laughs> the, um, uh, the, the pandemic cannot be an excuse for everything. Uh, it certainly has impacted on a number of things that we do, but it can't be an excuse for everything. I totally agree. Had we been able to have that meeting back in, in uh, March of 2020, uh, we may have been able to look at the, the previous um, season, July to October, November, uh, and make some decisions on that bylaw. Because what I said a minute ago, there's, we only have two choices here. That bylaw is on the books. So we either, we either council either um, directs the, the, uh, my colleagues and staff to enforce it as we would any other bylaw. I'm not, I'm not used to a, a bylaw being passed and then uh, being told uh, that we're not going to enforce it. We're not going to um, uh, be, be strict on enforcement um, because we want, to, we want to look at the issues that came up with that council meeting. As I said, I, I don't criticize council for that at all. That was, that was a reasonable approach to take in July of 2019, it really was. The problem was that it's taken us till now um, to have a look back at things and realize that we've got some problems out there. So the bylaw either has to be um, uh, taken off uh, its um, suspension and council knew about that, or uh, we have to make some decisions based on the submissions that people have made and conversations that we all have had with, with uh, uh, people here on the screen and others uh, to make some changes in that bylaw so that it reflects um, the, um, um, the, the law that was passed on, on uh, July the 9th and reflects the issues that we now very clearly understand about what's out there. Uh, there was some reference about um, uh, being pay, uh, consulting being paid and, and uh, uh, Ian Kilgore's mention, name was mentioned, uh, and that's correct. And the, the bylaw that was ultimately passed 
um, on July the 9th, 2019, uh, was for the most part um, done with the consent of Mr. Kilbar. Um, those of you that were at public meetings um, back in, uh, in the, the summer of 2019 will recall that Ian mentioned a couple of times that um, our bylaw might be moot because, or redundant, because the province at that time was actively looking at this issue as a province-wide problem. And they were, Ian had through his sources in, in Queens Park, um, had, had some indication that the province was going to step in and, and enact some provincial legislation, which would try to address those issues. That didn't happen. Um, we, we also, as we always do, um, uh, Mr. LaPlante and I, um, uh, on behalf of council, had discussions with our solicitor at Velboom um, about this bylaw. And again, I won't, I won't characterize um, our lawyer's position on it as that uh, this bylaw is uh, as good as it gets. Um, he was satisfied at the time that it covered the issues um, uh, adequately and, and agreed that uh, a period of time uh, for that one season uh, where we looked at um, how the bylaw was, um, uh, was being adhered to by the public um, it's the old story, you know, if, if um, whether, the, whether the, the bylaw is being enforced or not, if you, if you know that that's the law of the land uh, and, you're, and you're going to be a good citizen, uh, we don't need to send someone out to say do this or that. The ones that we, 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 um, uh, were, uh, we received complaints on, and there were um, at least five um, and more subsequent to that, but the ones that we did receive complaints on, uh, Mr. O'Reilly had conversations multiple times with all of them um, and uh, to, it, to, to, uh, uh, to tell them that the, the direction of council was that they would be given a period of time to comply. And I think it was 120 days. I'd have to go back and check the direction. 120 days to comply or um, the, um, the offending vehicle had to be removed. And in most cases that happened. Uh, what, what took place um, in 2021, or 2020, I'm rather, sorry, uh, was that um, we didn't have that meeting with council. Uh, we didn't make any adjustments to the bylaw. And unfortunately, as Michael and Marcy and John have clearly and, and, and uh, very patiently indicated, uh, the problem got worse. So um, I, I hope very much so to, to work with council and, and uh, Doug and I will do that with our lawyer. Uh, Ian Kilgore is no longer a consultant. He works for the city of North Bay. Um, we, Doug and I looked into whether or not prior to this meeting, whether or not there was um, any provincial legislation that had been quietly passed by the province to deal with this issue, or whether there was any indication from the province uh, with uh, the various ministries that there was legislation pending and we couldn't find any. So that's not, that's not, um, uh, that's not going to be a, um, uh, an answer to any of our issues. Uh, however, as I said, I, I'm, I clearly understand what we have to do here, but it's a political decision now. Council has to decide sometime after this evening whether or not uh, we will um, um, enforce the bylaw as we normally would, without exception, uh, or make some changes to the bylaw. And again, just to go back to my apology, I, I, anyone listening here, um, I, 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 I take the blame for any miscommunication on people not being notified that this was coming up tonight. I understood clearly that we were going to have, um, we were going to notify people that signed a list when the bylaw was coming back up for discussion as a bylaw. This was a, this meeting tonight was simply to get um, submissions and points of view to assist council. Uh, and I point out again, it's unfortunate that um, um, half the council members are, are, uh, are no longer here uh, to help council make some decisions about what issue, what uh, changes we need to make, if any, to that bylaw. And, and uh, my colleagues and I will work very closely with, uh, with council, uh, the mayor, um, and, and with you folks um, to, to make a, a um, submission to council about what we need to do with this bylaw one way or the other. So I, I hope that um, uh, that clarifies uh, uh, the, the situation a little bit. And again, I want to thank um, John and Marcy and, and uh, Michael for their submissions tonight in a, in a very professional, very patient way. I, you, you, you were that way when, you, when, you, when we talked a number of times on the phone. I knew very well how frustrated you were. And I appreciate that all these, all these months later, uh, you're still um, offering um, good comments to council and to my colleagues and I, uh, and you're doing it in a very patient and reasonable way. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. LaPlante, does that uh, negate your 
address to council or do you wish to continue to speak? Uh, he, uh, Peter pretty well covered everything that I was going to say, uh, but I'll add a little bit. Uh, the list that was filled out at the time of the meeting in January uh, of 2018, when we had the first public meeting, uh, the people on that list, they were notified on May 15th of 2018 uh, of the bylaw becoming uh, coming before council. So that was all done. The bylaw was passed. The file was closed. So that list stayed in that file. Um, had Peter wanted it, he would have got it from me. But just for clarity, that was part of the zoning bylaw amendment. The amendment was done, the file was closed. Tonight's meeting is, is a different uh, beast, as you might say. And that's pretty much all I got to say. Thanks, Peter, for your input. Thank you, Peter. Uh, All right, thank you. Yes, uh, Andre, did I see you signaling to speak? No? no. Okay, Councillor no. Lagasse. I, I just have one question for uh, uh, Doug. Um, Doug, you say this is another beast. Help me to understand, does this, the, 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 the signage of that paper isn't um, relevant anymore? Or do they have to sign, is there another one that they can sign or? Because because it ended, did this end with that bylaw that that uh, they adopted in 2019? Uh, yes, it did. And now, if you're going to do another amendment, it will start over as a new amendment with new forms to fill out to be notified again. That amendment's over. What you have done now is well. Step one uh, held off on uh, enforcing it, and now may want to amend it. And that's fine, uh, but the, the amendment process starts all over again with a new file uh, for a new amending bylaw to bylaw 2012-49. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, as was indicated by the CAO, there's no... Uh, decision going to be made this evening related to the RV bylaw. It was uh, an opportunity for, for dialogue and, and refresh of the, uh, of the points of view related to it. And um, now if, if I've understood correctly, um, council may choose to provide direction to uh, municipal staff if they seek amendment to that bylaw. Failing that in a timely manner, the enforcement of the bylaw will uh, return in, in its uh, opportunity to do so. And um, there will be no amendment to the bylaw. So uh, if I understood correctly, it's up to council now to, um, to provide suggestion to, to staff on what amendments they seek to make to the bylaw. Is that uh, interpreted correctly? This is for me, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Speaking to me? Yes, CAO, uh, were you indicating to speak? Well, uh, it, it, your worship, yes, just um, uh, uh, two things. Um, on on Councillor Lagasse's uh, comment um, and, and Doug's response, um, he's right. Um, the the um, the one notice, um, uh, Councillor Lagasse, was a uh, requirement under the Planning Act. Uh, to, uh, uh, to be notified. And Doug's correct that that issue has now come and gone. Um, my, my apology and, and my position on um, anyone wishing future notice um, about this issue, um, they, can, they can provide that um, to, to us at the office, provide that to you or any member of council, and, and I'll make sure they do. That's not a planning requirement, that's mine. Okay, um, uh, Doug said uh, quite properly that um, there's some notification requirements under the Planning Act, and those were followed, 
and those requirements uh, ceased once that amendment was passed. But a, a notice uh, for any future discussion uh, on this issue, a, by, a bylaw presentation or not, uh, if, if Council Lagasse, you can, uh, you can provide me with a list of names of people that want such notice, I'll make sure they get it. The, the, the other comment, uh, Your Worship, was just on, on uh, uh, your, uh, uh, your summary about what happens next, and I, and I would agree with you. We, we, we will um, work with uh, you and Council about um, um, uh, a, a joint submission in terms of what we, what we believe, what, at the staff level, what we believe um, could be done, not necessarily should be done. Um, and um, uh, work with council on that uh, at a future meeting. So yes, that's 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 the that's the steps going forward. Okay, thank you. So if um, council has nothing further to um, to ask or, or suggest at this point in time, I'll uh, I'll close out this segment of the uh, meeting, and we'll move on into our agenda. Is there uh, either member of council, do you wish to add anything further? Okay. All right, thank you everybody for your contribution this evening. That's uh, been quite productive. All right, um, minutes and reports of municipal committees and boards. And uh, I say that uh, I'm not chasing anybody away. You're more than welcome to uh, view the rest of our meeting. It is a public uh, council meeting, so. Please feel free to stay along and uh, and uh, learn more about your municipal business. Minutes and reports of municipal committees and boards, planning advisory. I don't believe they've had a meeting. No, we didn't have a meeting. Uh, Andre? Recording secretary flagging me, yes. I would just ask Mr. Goodrow to please leave the meeting. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Um, I invited them to stay, but um, oh, sorry. Not sorry. A, not, he's not a meeting participant. I'm not going to take his vote. He's, he's welcome to stay and watch the meeting if okay, he so sorry. chooses. But I see the CAO uh, making a point of order here. So please go ahead. You're muted, uh, Mr. CAO. You remain muted. Um, yeah, Your Worship, um, I, I think the reason for what um, um, what my colleague was saying was that um, Mr. Goudreau is certainly um, uh, welcome to um, to watch the meeting on uh, on YouTube or to listen to it. Uh, it's just that um, uh, the, the people that are uh, that are on the screen uh, were invited to be um, uh, uh, to be part of the meeting and make submissions and comment uh, directly. Um, so we're not suggesting that uh, Mr. Goudreau has to. Uh, close up and not, and not listen anymore or watch, but uh, it should be done on our YouTube channel uh, with everyone else um, or, or listening to it um, on phone line. Is that correct, Andre? Yeah. So uh, you're, you're not being turfed out, Mr. Goudreau. We just, uh, uh, we just want to um, um, ensure that the people that are, are uh, in the virtual box here are members of council. All right, thank you. Okay, um, back to planning advisory, and I don't believe they had a meeting. No, we did not have a meeting, but I do have one uh, scheduled for May 10th with four applications. Okay, thank you. Fire department, I don't believe they've had a meeting either. Recreation and fitness, no meetings there, I don't believe. Okay. The library has not had a meeting um, of late. They did have a, a budget submission meeting, uh, but I mentioned that in our last meeting from their minutes. General government has not met, although in the background, uh, municipal departments are working towards uh, submitting their draft budgets to general government for consideration at a point in the future. And um, I believe that's moving along quite well. Yes, sir. Uh, police services has not had a meeting, although there is conversation um, related to the, the detachment board um, method of police service boards. 
that is uh, a new uh, product that uh, the province is encouraging and um, it would replace the smaller police services boards that some municipalities have with a much larger um, detachment based board. Emergency management, the um, emergency control group, which is uh, comprised uh, mostly of uh, municipal staff, myself, uh, the health unit, and others who uh, contribute on, a, on an as needed basis. We've met weekly now for uh, 58 consecutive weeks related to the um, COVID-19 pandemic and the local state of emergency that we have been under. The um, group produced a information bulletin that went out in the mail last week, and we thank uh, Recording Secretary Gagne for uh, her, her compilation work and production of that document that was in everybody's mailbox last week. And it holds um, some information related to the health unit dashboard, they call it, which has recent statistics and other information related to vaccination and other such things, along with some emergency preparedness information. Emergency preparedness week is coming up in early May and uh, our municipal departments, public works, the fire department and other um, entities, the library have uh, contributed information to that flyer. Public works, the public works manager uh, is here in our meeting this evening. Is there anything you'd like to add manager Carr to the conversation tonight? I am. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Uh, our budget has been given to the CAO and to our financial department for consideration before it goes to committee. Um, we've been working on removing the berm from Gagno Street so that our wing sits flat on the side of the road so we don't have all that snow and also the ability to get rid of any spring runoff that sits there in the spring. Uh, we've been cold patching and uh, the landfill keeps us busy for several days of the week. Okay, thank you. And uh, also last council meeting, it was uh, suggested that council should entertain some road construction work um, this year. And I believe you were instructed to work towards updating some of the quotations. I know under uh, COVID parameters, that's probably more time consuming than under normal circumstances, but we look forward to your report related to that at some point in the future. Secondary to that, uh, with the wonderful dry spring that we're having, it's very timely that the um, calcium tender is further in our agenda because it won't be long before dust starts to become an issue on our uh, gravel type roads throughout the municipality. So thank you. Um, reports and non-municipal committees and boards, FANOM. I'll remind uh, members of council and others that are so interested that the FANOM conference is free this year. It's a one day virtual um, event happening. I believe it's the 6th of May, I wanna say, or is it, uh, don't go by the date. It's a, it's a one day virtual event and it's uh, indicated on the Phenom website, how you can participate in that. The sponsors have covered all of the costs related to that virtual conference, and we appreciate that. Conservation Authority, is there any? Uh... We have our meeting tomorrow night, so I'll update council on, on our next uh, council meeting. All right, thank you. And Castle Home, there's been a number of um, confidential type emails arrive in my inbox that I haven't even had opportunity to read yet related to the redevelopment of Castle Home and uh, member municipalities and their contributions and so forth related to it. So I won't uh, speak. The CAO perhaps has some information for me. Go ahead, oh, please. Uh, Your Worship, just of a general nature, as you know, um, um, the, uh, <clears throat> the conversation that you and I had with some mayors and CAOs uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, the city of North Bay requested some uh, additional uh, information about the, uh, the numbers and, and, a, and a new guarantee. Uh, and that was forthcoming. <clears throat> and um, the, the, uh, 
the email that you got yesterday, and I did, um, uh, purportedly is that. Um, I haven't been able to go through it, but I was going to—I uh, was going to mention, um, or, or I was going to ask you um, tomorrow uh, or sometime this week um, if um, if you'd like me to submit that document to uh, our solicitor. That was, I think, the, um, uh, the the decision you and the other mayors, the three other mayors, uh, made was that uh, we're all sharing the same law firm. And that so we should uh, we we could make one submission to Mr. Velblum uh, about that document before we before we make any further decisions about uh, how we move forward on that. So um, we, you and I can talk about that at a later date. But that document that you have that you haven't read nor have I, um, apparently that's what it is. Okay, thank you. Well, once I see how uh, comprehensive or complicated it might be, I might have better. Uh, dialogue to provide on subject so far. Okay, thank you. Um, there's no motions of committees then I don't believe other than the, the calcium tender and it comes later in our agenda. So um, the notices of motions as I indicated earlier are not being dealt with. There's no introduction or consideration of bylaws. So we're moving then to disbursements and um, I would take a mover and a seconder to put the disbursements on the table, and then we could entertain any questions related to them. Moved by Councillor Legassi. Seconded by Councillor Vinecore. Okay, I'll open the floor to any questions related to the disbursements. Yes, Councillor Legassi. Page one of three. Under general government, um, the citizen alert app, is that monthly or is that yearly cost? Um, it, go ahead, Andre, it's, it's annual, uh, Councillor. Annual, okay, thank you. Um, my next, Question is um, that's it. That's it for tonight. Um, yeah. Where'd, where'd the mayor go? Um, what, what, if I might, uh, Councillor, just to, just one further comment on that uh, citizens alert. Um, that's an annual fee. And um, uh, speaking for myself, and, and Andre can weigh in if she if she likes. But um, that's money well spent. Um, we we a, a, and a lot of this credit for this goes to to Andre. Um, she introduced this idea to me, and um, we we subsequently um, got that service. A lot of municipalities in Ontario now have uh, OPP detachments now use it, uh, and uh, it was Bonfield that put the uh, North Bay detachment onto this issue, and they 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 rolled that idea out to other detachments. So it's very well used, um, Council Lagasse. We, we use it to send out notices of, of any variety um, to, to um, our citizens, whether they live in Bonfield or not, uh, they subscribe to the service. So um, uh, it's, it's money well spent in my All right, I do have a question for Public Works, Mayor McLaren, if that's all right. Yes, proceed. Um, it's regarding the, um, uh, the cold patch. Is that, um, has the price gone up or is that like, is, does it um, is it around the same price as what we paid last year? It's about nine dollars more a ton this year. It's one hundred and forty four dollars a ton um, because of uh, there's talk out there that there's a resin shortage, uh, tires, hydraulic hoses, anything that has is comprised of that resin uh, will be affected. Okay, thank you. I, I was just wondering because everything else went up. I was wondering if uh, we would see a rise in 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 um, in our our roads too. Um, I I did see that uh, the backhoe. Uh, I'll touch wood. Uh, I see the backhoe uh, maintenance and repairs has has gone down in the last uh, the last month. So um, it looks good. Thank you. Welcome. OK, 
Okay, is there any further questions related to the disbursements? Yes, Councilor Vinecourt. I'll just add uh, public works. Yeah, back to the backhoe. Oh, is that uh, the old one, Ann? The the one in the. Uh, uh, no, that was uh, uh, the front seal and the transmission had to be replaced. It was leaking. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. So that's it. Next. Okay, thank you. So I'll read the motion then. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Viancourt, that the following disbursements be approved as prepared. Under APO 5693, all departments for a subtotal of $47,140.26 and payroll batches 1141 through to 1143, coming to a total of $33,141.07, resulting in a total disbursement of $80,281.36. All in favor. Carried. Correspondence and information. Amanda Tessier related to purchasing shoreline road allowance. And there's a uh, very clear memo from the Director of Planning and Development related to that request in that the municipality is the owner of that piece of property and therefore it's uh, not not up to the adjacent owner to seek to purchase it uh, based upon what's written here. So there is a, a motion prepared related to that that I believe you have in your agenda package. I would take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Vinecore. Whereas Council has received an official request from Amanda Tessier to purchase a portion of the shore road allowance connected to her property. And whereas the municipal lawyer has advised Council that the remainder of parcel 14182 Nipissing is registered in the name of the Corporation of the Township of Bonfield which is the property fronting on the shore road allowance. Be it hereby resolved that council does not wish to entertain the request as submitted. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Dust control contract. In your package as well, you have information from the public works manager, a report related to the um, budget um, annual purchase that we normally make and the quantities that we use on, a, on an annual basis. And as such, uh, the manager has indicated that the budget, because of the uh, increase, uh, slight increase in the price per liter of um, calcium chloride, it will need to be increased, but our budget has not been set yet. So um, on that basis, this was a joint tender with the Township of East Ferris, as we've done for quite some time. And this would acknowledge our indication to purchase using that uh, tender and bid that was opened on our behalf. I take a mover and a seconder related to it. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Vinecourt. Whereas the public works manager recommended to council that a joint request for quotation was executed with the municipality of East Ferris for the purchase of dust control and road stabilization material. And whereas two bids were received and the lowest bid for 0 0.309 cents per liter, 30.9 30 cents per liter is recommended and is to be awarded to Pollard Highway Products for the purchase of 180,000 liters for a total cost of $56,598.92 after tax rebates. Be it hereby resolved that council approves of this recommendation. Any questions? All in favor? 
Terry. Information, quite a number of um, motions of support sought related to vaccine allocation. And then if you drop one notch further, and each of them were addressed to the provincial government and other entities, but also to our local MPP. If you note item two under information, the MPP has addressed those concerns um, and responded to them already. So um, unless I hear a strong indication of, of um, wanting to join the chorus, um, I would just take that as information for this evening. Okay, and then as I mentioned earlier, the Phnom Conference is, uh, is an item of information that we've received in our package. There's no new business. Unfinished business, the Our Lives Matter flyer. It uh, has been on our agenda now for a period of time, and it um, uh, came there uh, because of the um, evidence that was provided to me that uh, a member of municipal council had circulated the Our Lives Matter flyer last um, late summer, August, September timeframe. Uh, the, the evidence that was provided to me was through um, a Canada Post document that um, provided to me indicated that um, a member of council on his own Accord had uh, had distributed that. Um, as we're all aware, the the conclusion of the uh, Derek Chauvin murder trial has happened, and um, he's awaiting sen sentencing. But the um, the matter was of prominence in the media for the past uh, month or so, and that and that media coverage. Um, as has been described to me, re-traumatized a number of citizens who um, uh, a year ago, or I guess seven or eight months ago, were, were quite disturbed at receiving uh, that flyer in the mail. And uh, thankfully now, this uh, matter, aside from the sentencing of, of Mr. Chauvin, uh, will start to um, drop from the, from the headlines and that uh, the people who are tra traumatized in our community will not have that um, as prevalent in their daily lives to, uh, to face. You may recall that the, um, the document, I could read it for counsel if you so desire, but uh, there is a copy of it in your package. Uh, I think it would only serve to, to cause more <clears throat> harm than good in um, in entering it into the record by, by me reading it officially. But um, it, it mentioned small community, big heart. Um, and, and what's been said to me that uh, if, if that is truly the case, that we're a small community with a big heart, why was this hurtful document mailed to all of our citizens? So um, because we're some period of time now with this on our agenda, I believe I'm doing a disservice to the... Uh, to the parties that provided it to me uh, with Canada Post evidence because um, I was giving every uh, opportunity for, for Councillor Foisey to, um, to dispute the fact that he uh, was in fact the person who sent out this document. And I still uh, maintain that uh, it would be um, appropriate if, if in fact uh, the evidence is wrong then he should uh, strongly indicate that it was not him who sent out this document. So um, I apologize to the uh, people who have provided me the information. I'm not uh, discounting your, your work or the documents that you've provided to me, but I'm, I'm extending uh, as far as, as humanly possible to allow Councillor Foisey to um, to clear his uh, name in this regard, if, if in fact it proves that it was not him that sent this out. So um, because it's such a serious matter, I'm, I'm going to allow it to stand as a referral for one more meeting, only because uh, Councillor Foisey did not attend this evening um, after about the 10 minute mark of our meeting. So 
um, we'll have to refer it again for this evening. Um, there's no addendum, confirmatory bylaw. I would take a mover and a seconder related to the confirmatory bylaw. And I need to, first of all, find it in my package. Where did I put my motions? Bear with me one moment. I'm just trying to find my stack of motions that were provided to me. Okay. Take a mover and a second order for the confirmatory bylaw. Moved by Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by Councillor Lagasse. Where's council? Where's council deems it expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session? Be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council from April 13th, 2021 to April 27th, 2021, be read a first, second, and third time passed and numbered 2021-13, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. All in favor? Carried. That would appear to be all our business for this evening. So I thank you very much for attending our virtual council meeting and all the uh, listeners and viewers that we have using our YouTube channel and our telephone line. Thank you and good evening. Randy, you didn't close the meeting. <laughs> you didn't close the meeting. <laughs> Tell him to come back. Uh, I'm gonna text him, I'll text him. <laughs> Andre, can you get a hold of uh, Russ? Yes, I did, Rusty. Unmute. Unmute. Me? Unmute me? No, there. Ran, ran. Okay. I'm unmuted. Um, I guess because quorum left when I left, the meeting was adjourned anyway, but we'll do a motion to adjourn. That, uh, that this meeting of council be adjourned at 8.29 p.m. I take a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Vinecourt. Seconded by Councillor Lagasse, that this regular meeting of council be adjourned at 8.29 p.m. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Good. Now, good evening, everybody.